So we'll move from the fungi to something a bit bigger um, and something entirely new, which is the Anvil Liberator, which is Anvil's latest design a spaceship, which is purely for transporting ships. So we want to do something properly uh, and sort of provide that entry level spaceship for that career. If you want to be a, a ship hauler, then this is the ship for you. It provides that good foundational base for it. It's a fairly regular sort of process on this one. As Jared and I have chatted before, you know, these ships are often described as, as births, you know, easy births, hard births, difficult births. Um, I think this one was a fast birth. It's been a while since we've worked on some Anvil stuff. So in terms of the lineup, you know, we have the Ballista, the Terrapin, the Hurricane, the Valkyrie, you know, is probably more sort of, you know, it's one of those larger ships. Then we've got the Carrick. Yeah. So a lot of work has already been done for those ships. And we've got, um, you know, we've got the modular kits. So in terms of the concept process, uh, theoretically, it's it's smoother sailing. And in terms of, you know, the, our process again, uh, you know, it's that, it's that investigation. And, you know, each manufacturer has a sort of a loose set of rules. I'll say it's loose because there's always space for us to sort of slightly veer yeah. and slightly tweak the manufacturer. Well, I think, like you said earlier, like manufacturers change with time yeah, as well as... They evolve. Yeah, it's not like every ship came out with the exact same date with the exact same manufacturing processes. It, it kind of all... Yes, yeah. yeah. And I think, I, I mean, that's kind of what I like about Star Citizen is we've got this sort of, it's a sort of rolling kind of like design, you know, it's sort of design everything timelines. is being updated, yeah. yeah. Um, and, it, you know, it's nice that, you know, we, if, when we work narrative and they're like, oh, well, actually it's based on this old design. Yeah. Or whether it is, it's a new stuff. So, you know, one of the early requirements for, from John, which you can see here in this uh, fabulous des designer art. It's top quality design yeah, blocker. Yeah, I'm liking it. I'm not sure about that uh, shade of green, but <laughs> not quite anvil. But basically, this is super easy for us and also, you know, because we're working with a contractor about sort of laying out the limits of, you know, because we always, you know, we like to make ships big, you know, um, so it's always, okay, we've got our metrics, it has to fit within this, like, Whatever you do, make it cool, but it has to fit within these bounds. Yeah, so, it was quite strict on the landing pad size, but you need to fit a number of ships in it, but also make sure that it really kind of stayed within its... Otherwise, John will give us yeah, uh, big uh, slap rests. I'll of, come after you. Yeah. Because um, on, on that image there, you can see there's the red box, which is the maximum bounds that the ship can be. If, if you go outside that, it literally won't fit through the hangar doors yeah. and ceiling. So obviously it has to be in there, and that's a max, not a goal to hit because yeah. we've ended up in the past with ships that have a centimeter or two's clearance right Carrick. at the edge Carrick. <laughs> Carrick. 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 Uh, so when you're coming in and out of the hangar you just clip yeah as soon as you clip one side of it then it throws it into yeah. the other one yeah um, it makes it difficult and you can see there for the the extra small landing pads uh, the green size so once you've got three of them so at this point in the the design brief it was just three extra small ships by the time you've got these three green, and they're actually, they have some Z height to them, which I didn't put in here. Um, mm -hmm. By the time you've got these green blocks, so like you've got to have space for these and also got to fit in this, then you sort of start funneling yourself into Yeah, and I shapes. think, I mean, you'd, you know, you provided a reference image right at the start, which is of military hovercraft. Yeah, the, the American, uh, I can't remember if it's the Navy or the Army. Yeah, and so that was like... I mean, people will see straight away the the correlation between the two and the sort of influence. But, it you know, it also makes sense, right? It's, it's a very a functionality. Say it's a very functional ship, isn't it? Yeah. So, and, and it feels like, like I say, obviously the, the real-life version has been made for that function and this, this kind of follows suit. Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, we'll basically be looking at some of our exterior options. And, again, it's always, you know... It's quite difficult when you have something like that, that reference image yeah. of the military hovercraft because instantly it sits in your mind yeah. and you sort of get, um, kind of get sort of stuck in that thinking. And so, you know, part of my job is also to sort of push, push the concept artists and say, right, okay, well, what about this? What about that? I think, you know, it's always, a, you know, it's, it's always a sort of 
a dual role. You know, we sort of you, know, you work together and kind of uh, two minds is always better than one, right? So in, in this case, we're sort of looking at, you know, this is a sort of first first stab at it. So there's a lot of similarity with the Valkyrie. So there's the Valkyrie engines. You know, it's it's pretty standard. It's just one, one floor plate and it's symmetrical. Then we look at some cleaner stuff. It's not, you know, it, it's a nice design, but it uh, doesn't really speak of um, Anvil to me. No. I mean, but, I, you know, it's cool. I like it. There's some, there's some interesting certainly things. Certainly very hovercrafty. Yeah, yeah. I think just, just uh, too too simple. For, too wicked. Yeah. This one was asymmetrical version. You know, got that massive tank on the side. What it does, I'm not quite sure at this point, but it's, you know, it's just visual exploration. We've got the asymmetrical wings. Again, in, you know, sort of interesting stuff. At this point, we're starting to push... Um, into like terrapin territory so we've got sort of uh, essentially like the bridge and it's kind of like got a, a cowl it's like a sort of you know it's kind of like the little turtle head mm. from the terrapin and sort of mixing and matching and so you know it's kind of interesting again you know we're doing these things rapidly so you know has has some pros and cons design design wise well because obviously we have the xy metric but you also have the z so a lot of our hanger metrics are quite tall um, mm. So the, the problem with this one was it was just to the height of the ship. Like the actual yeah. actual height it would have needed to be would have been double that. So then you end up with this really tall gangly yeah. thing yeah. because we've also shortened it by a third. So I like you yeah. trying to get yourself into like the shape of a ship. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. tall. Yeah. And then here is like um, where we sort of start hitting upon something that um, I don't know where the decision was made, but you know it made sense to have the garages. Yeah. On that lower deck. Mm -hmm. Here, you know, you've got two tanks lying side by side, which, it, you know, is cool, it looks good, but it isn't actually like an official feature. Yeah. At, it was around this point where we, we were looking at the, the double layer thing uh, and trying to get these two layers to work or two floors to work with the three larger ships. So we changed it from the three extra small pads to two extra small pads, which basically take any single seat fighter in the game and Somewhere else, so I think a prospector also fits on there. Yeah, and then we scaled the the front one down to an extra extra small. So mm -hmm. that's things like the the Argo MPUV, uh, Origin eight five X, and smaller flying ships like that. But also interestingly, that extra extra small metric is sort of the same as the medium vehicle metric. There's there's like a meter difference yeah. in height, which is the ballista and Nova. So we went from these three extra smalls. Uh, two, two extra smalls on top, one extra extra small at the front, and then these two garage slots, which can also, if you're willing to try and fly your small ship in there. You can yeah, you were it. playing around. You could fit quite a few combinations yeah. of I ships mean, in I there. I mean, I had you? a shot. Yeah. I treated it like I was a fan and basically just and basically filled that whole carriage. There was no um, sort of like door opening space at all. It was yeah, yeah. yeah it was uh, cyclones and we know what the players DS's. are like. Just, yeah, I mean, it looked good. I mean, it looked like um. You know, a little like a ferry, you know, when they're just full of the vehicles all just stacked up. Um, just increases, like, the risk value of flying it, doesn't it? Like, if you, you know, <laughs> yeah, got three ships on it, all right, yeah. got 15. And need a big insurance yeah. um, payout. So, uh, you know, once we have the, you know, an exterior that we were happy with, then it's, you know, then we move on to the interior. And, you know, it's only two crew. Yeah, so it's, it's two crew. Uh, you have, obviously, the, the person flying the thing. Uh, and then the the second person who can either it's sort of a flexible role. There there is a turret that they can control. They can go sit in it and uh, shoot anything that comes at you. But it's not really a ship that's a combat ship. It's mm. it's a transporter ship. If you want protection, you need to bring protection with you, or rely on the ships that you're carrying to provide that protection. Which mm. is another benefit of this open topped. Ship yeah, is, yeah, you can just you come under launch. attack. Yeah. Everyone yeah. can launch out straight away. You're not having to fly your ships out one by one out of a tube. They they can get off pretty quickly. We haven't done launch tubes yet, have we? One day. One day. One day. One day we do launch tubes. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I think about that. Um, so yeah, basically we've moved on to interiors again. It's uh, it's just investigation of. Um, you know, we've got our function and what it needs to achieve. But, you know, in the last what, 
two, four years, definitely the last two years, is like our process has just been a lot, a lot stronger in terms of player flow. So there's no more of the Starfarer, uh, Higgledy Piggledy mystery tour. I mean, that was our first yeah. multi crew ship, so the yeah. pipeline wasn't in place. I, I mean, spaceships, interiors, I was like, I don't know. So, I mean, there's been a lot of learning going on. And so now it's like, okay, if I'm a player, what 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 experience do I want? Yeah. Like, how do I get from A to B? I don't want to do A to G to H to get to B. Yeah. None of that business. So, so as we look at these um, uh, interiors, we just sort of looked at sort of different flow, basically, different ideas. So um, it feels quite good, and we sort of worked on, again, just flow. So if you're in the garage, you can easily get from the garage into into the living quarters. Um, you know, the elevators just run the full height. It's one for crew, one for passengers. So if you're under the ship, you can just easily get up and down. And so uh, the whole process is a lot more streamlined. Um, and there's even, like, even if you're in that top, in those top rooms... Um, you know, and like it's, you know, there's a call to action. You've all got to get out. We've even put a nice little set of stairs that just run down the side of the yeah. ramp. And so you can just park, you know, run down, get in your whatever it is. Whatever vehicle. <laughs> and then off you go. So a lot of, I feel like a lot of thought was given to just like and improve. I, I think it's really nice as well the fact that you've got, like I say, that, that passenger section kind of sectioned off and they're always ready. But then, like say you were saying about like the bowels of the ship and how that's that sort of all that technical stuff's like hidden at the, the bottom and that that feels nice that that's crew only and and yeah you because know, you don't want passengers just, yeah you know, yeah just definitely milling around and then moving on to you can see here the garage space and where the cargo is stored so originally that was, the cargo was going to essentially take up one yeah, of the garage spaces it was going to be a, a a compromise choice that players could make of that the cargo is stacked down either down the middle of the, the the lower garage or across like one of the pads so you could choose uh but then you decided to uh well we had a bit of space well yeah, had a bit basically of space uh, the concept guy when i went rogue i was like oh what about this this is cool like, right. yeah yeah it does look cool yeah <laughs> yeah he's like all right john can we have this coming yeah. to a meeting oh i've just done gone away and done this uh this this thing that we're not going to talk about, but it's, it's turned into <laughs> yeah. the cargo storage room. So yes. it's, yeah, is a, a good sort of save. Of <laughs> well, we want, I mean, you know, for me as an art director, I want, you know, I want my team to feel like they can take those little forays off if they want, if they've got a good idea. Um, and, you know, luckily this time it's, yeah. it's panned out <laughs> yeah. and makes good use of the space. I mean, because like you said, the ship is... It is quite big. So then we get to the fun part, which is when we get onto promo. Uh, I think it's everyone's favourite part involved with this sort of stuff. And that is really sort of, I call it selling the dream. So it's, um, you know, you're really sort of honing in into what a player's experience might be. Um, and I, I love doing this sort of stuff as well. So um, so here we've got you know, a fully loaded carrier. It's the the uh, core of what that ship is for, like, you have... These these smaller carry, carrier borne ships is what Chris likes to call them. Like they're they're not deep space fighters. They can't go long distances by themselves. They they need to be from a, a parent ship. So the the liberator is unless you suddenly got an Idris to carry things to with. This is you. this yeah, is yeah. this is what you're going to see going through these wide and long star systems. Like Pyro is incredibly large compared to Stanton and Stanton's already quite big to go from one side to the other so we really need these ships to help you lug all your stuff mm. from point A to point B yeah. because if you do it in your in your Hornet that's going to be I don't know 50 100 little stops where you cram <laughs> it in one of these and send it on its way it's going to be a much better experience for everyone yeah yeah absolutely no, I'm, I'm, I think this is going to be a, like say a fun one to kind of get on to yeah yeah i think your team's gonna like that that's pretty much it for the anvil liberator um ship transporter its core two-man crew designed for for hauling three spaceships and some ground vehicles uh long distance uh mm -hmm. very cool
let's let's talk about the Banu Merchantman then. It's that that ship that's been around for for a long time. For a long time now. I think fans have been waiting quite a while for this. Yeah, we we haven't really shown a a huge amount of it beyond those original concept images. So no, and I think um, you know this is my second round on this. So I think maybe like. Three years ago, we did a we did an initial concept yeah. round. Oh, around the time of the Defender, I guess. We, we I can't started. actually remember. So long ago. Yeah, yeah. But sure, let's, um, I think fans are going to love this. So there's a few things that need to be updated for the Merchantman. Uh, obviously, we've talked about this many times in the past. Uh, as Star Citizen develops, things get added, uh, things get refined. We, we improve our, our workflow. So... Number one thing we had to do was look at the size and the scale of the ship because I think it was it was 160 meters wide and 160 meters long, so it's in essence a cube. Yeah, uh, but mm -hmm. it's a very tall ship as well. Yeah, it? but yeah. it was it was very vague because we had never done a full interior layout, so not not to like the new system. No. Yeah, so we need to make sure it fit everything in. So it's always a good starting point. Um, the cargo numbers were. They've never really been changed since they were originally concepted as freight units, not standard cargo units. So mm -hmm. the scale of cargo has changed since we did it originally. I don't remember freight units. Yeah. So it, was, it was, yeah. It's a long, for my long time. time ago. The marketplace slash bazaar yeah. uh, needs to have a good working out. And then lastly, uh, we wanted to have some synergy between the Defender and the Merchantman. So we. We found a way to get a defender hangar on board, so that obviously has big consequences for the ship. So let's talk about the exterior. I guess the thinking about it, it seems so seems so long ago since I started on this, um, but the addition of the the defender to the ship basically had the biggest impact in a way, like just because because the defender is not a slim ship, is it? No, it's, it's deceptively yeah. big. To me, like the defender, I always think in my head that it's this tiny little yeah. thing, but it's, in fly it's, mode, it's quite slim. Yeah, but and then when it's landed, it's got this sort of you know big stance. Yeah, so um, this has been uh, I, I can't I think I've probably been on this for maybe a year something like that now. Um, and I said before, you know, we we did an initial round of concept work, and it was sort of done more in isolation, so we didn't really have. Uh, a full interior and we sort of treated it more as okay we need a corridor we need a, an idea of a marketplace we need an idea of a bridge um, and you know we'll kind of sort of uh, piece them together and so that was maybe like three years ago something like that and obviously process has changed mm -hmm. you know as we've discussed today it's more about the player experience and the flow and things making sense less less rule of cool if we we still have the coolness, but you want it to work right. Yeah. You don't want it to be frustrating. I think, I think when, when you kind of do it, like, obviously this big ship, so you think, oh, yeah, you know, we can make whatever room this size and it'll be, it'll be fine, but that kind of always sets us up for just a lot more headaches when it comes to, to our side. So by you spending the time to actually, like, fully flesh out the interior, it just saves us so much time when we come to actually yeah. do the production side yeah. of it. Definitely. Kind of takes all that risk away from us and puts it up front onto onto you basically yeah. so thanks Paul yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you're, welcome. <laughs> you're welcome I mean we've tried we've tried hard I mean you can see here that you know the ship did have to scale up yeah we talked about earlier we have those those hangar metrics and scaled up it now doesn't fit doesn't fit the hangar so we'll, we'll get to the I think we'll get to the solution in a little bit yeah and just a quick shot of the front and you can actually see that from the front it hasn't actually changed that much you know it's grown a little bit in height but you know, gained a little bit of body mass, but overall pretty pretty similar. I mean, we've you know sort of you know the ethos of this whole thing is you know the ship was really cool mm. anyway. Like everybody really liked the ship, so it wasn't that we wanted to change it just for change's sake. It was just we need to make it work. We do need to advance it, um, and so between myself. Concept artist Mike Oberschneider and Mark Gibson, um, one of the CIG's designers, we've we basically met twice a week, every week for months, and basically gone through the ship from top to bottom, inside to out. Yeah, there's, um, there's a huge amount of ship 
Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. It, you know, hands down, this has been the most difficult and hardest shit to date. Like, um, I went, I've not had a nervous breakdown. Actually, you know, the, the whole process has been quite nice in a way. Um, but it's just been long. It's the long, it's the... I think this is the one that, like... It's a marathon. To, to begin with, I was really scared. And then the, the kind of, like, the closer you've kind of got to finishing your work, the kind of, like, the less scared I'm getting and the more excited I'm getting. <laughs> and I'll probably have, when we get into production, I'll be like, oh, no, what are we going to do? And then, <laughs> then again, once we kind of start, actually kind of get over that hurdle, because it is, it is a, it's quite an intimidating shit. Not, not like, just visually, but, but like... Yeah. With the, you know. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff. I mean, we're seeing here the sort of hangar opening. Mm -hmm. Um, so basically, we've you know the one of the sort of design philosophies of the Banu um, ships is they they sort of incorporate tech where it suits them. So they use tech from humans, they use tech from Xi'an, um, whatever suits them to sort of achieve what their needs are. So for this ship, we've leveraged a lot of Xi'an tech. So it's a lot of that um, essentially levitation tech. So stuff doesn't have to be physically connected to move sort of it sort of hovers and then and then shifts along so it's it's basically given us a lot of opportunity for creativity so hanger here you know it's always multi-part as well so it's always mm. kind of nice basically shot from the front this is with the, the front guns out which are s8 that's yeah, correct big, isn't it? big size eight guns one of the the original core cool things of the the match was all its weapons are sort of tucked away and and hidden so it yes. gives you that non-threatening aura to start with and when it needs to then everything so it's going to be quite a powerhouse really isn't it like yeah you know, yeah with it's, its, its guns and its turrets it's a proper it's, and it's a proper transformer this year yeah. you know i mean there's, there's there's probably no area that doesn't transform almost especially on the exterior and again you know like john said it's just to keep with that Kind of like, oh, you know. Just a friendly trader. Yeah, just a yeah, friendly trader. Peaceful. Don't worry about me. Just yeah. going on my business. And then suddenly everything just pops out and, and it's all business. So, again, sort of multi-stage animation for the guns. Again, for the turret. Um, I mean, the turret featured in the original. Um, you know, there was a hidden... It was never uh, really fully explained. No, there was, no. There was a, a turret, a man turret there that you could get in. And defend with and it was in that top fin i guess you call yeah it. and when when you know when the weaponry is unmanned it's a lot easier we can get away with a lot smaller spaces once you put a person in it then it's a whole different ball of wax yeah and just a player experience and it's it's a you know twin twin gun twin, yeah, twin <laughs> yeah. s5 so it's not giving you a little tickle it's uh, yeah. quite a big punch yeah and even though it's only a, a you know, a turret, a gunner, you, you still got to kind of take all the consideration you're taking in a like a pilot seat in terms of their visibility and, and everything else. And, and, and yeah, as yeah. Well. And, and yes, you know, you, you expect to see the big guns and the silhouette and get that kind of like the real feel of, of being in a gunner seat. But it, like I say, it's, it's quite easy for it to just kind of grow in complexity quite yes. quickly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, basically, we've, you know, we've used GM Tech again to help us sort of reveal the turret. Also to elevate the turret, um, still, you know, we've, we've had we've got multiple ideas for that, so I think we'll just have to figure that out a lot further on. And then we have these, I mean, these these guns look tiny. In yeah, person, don't they? they're, they're still size. Like so these these are guns that most fighters have equipped to them, but they're on these um, point defense turrets. So obviously, the ship was big to start with. It's bigger now. It's more of a target for missiles and torpedoes and. One of the best ways we have in game to counter those is these automated point defense turrets. So, Banu again, well, humans have these phalanx style guns that shoot down incoming threats. We'll, we'll take that and we'll use our own guns. Uh, so, there's, it's got four of these on the hull. So, there's two on top near the bridge, and then I think we see uh, the other two uh, underneath. Uh, so, you've sort of got your, your 360 degrees protection from, from missiles mm. from those. And then there's a, an additional pair of size four remote turrets under the wings. Uh, these are controlled from the bridge. Uh, the bridge crew mentioned them. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's not lacking on. Not lacking on the, the thing is, it, it can carry a fair amount of cargo, and and you know it's got its own trading floor. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. your livelihood. Yeah, yeah, you kind of need to make sure that. I mean, you basically, that. yeah. There's a it's it's a bit of a TARDIS. It's a bit of a mm. you know, yeah. There's a 
as people will see, there's a whole bunch of extra stuff that we've squeezed into this compared to the first one. So there's always been this feature on the on the Banu, which was there on the original, but it never really had a function. You know, some people called it the paddle, some people called it the flipper, but Chris was like, okay, it needs, it needs a reason yeah. to yeah. be in there. It, it is very dominant. Yeah. In, in this device, yeah. So I, I, I'll always remember that one bit of Defender concept art where it's just there, just destroying a mountain. <laughs> it flies over, <laughs> just dragging it through. So we've, um, you know, it's it's a multifunction essentially because um, one of the difficulties was is over at the top of that flipper, fuel scoop, sorry, um, is basically the entrance to the marketplace for traders and the public. So it was, you know, there's that challenge of what it needs to look uh, you know, it needs to do its job, but it also needs to look visually appealing because it's going to be the entrance. Mm -hmm. um, so there was, and we'll see that a little in a second. Um, but it was, yeah, it was always it was always a bit of a tricky thing to solve. And so, you know, again, we're seeing here the, as John mentioned earlier, the ship got wider and didn't yeah. actually fit on a landing pad, which, which meant we had no hangers that it would officially fit in. We yeah, could only ever officially land at docking. Stations with docking yeah. ports or on a planet's surface, which is, you're, as a trader, you're missing out on Living. all the places you could land to, to do trading. So we had to find a solution. a solution. I mean, the funny thing is, this is this is the most, this is the simplest of the of the um, of the solutions that we came up with. I mean, there's probably like ten others that we did. Some of them were super crazy, you know, part you know parts just folding back on each other and all sorts of things. So, but. In the end, I think, I mean, simplicity wins out. I mean, it's... it's it, They're not small bits of wing to move. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of... I mean, there's gaps it? here, and we, you know, we haven't got the mesh in there, yeah. but there will be. We'll, we'll work it out for you, Ben. Yeah. So you can see here, this is basically a shot of what is the fuel scoop, but it transforms again and becomes this pathway to the marketplace. So you'll have this... Basically, we wired this experience again. It's kind of the red carpet treatment walking up into the marketplace it's not in this image but you know we will have hopefully um we'll have like softs like awnings basically that will sort of come out as well and so i'll have that sort of marketplace it, i think for me this, this is one of the ships that really excites me because um it's very different to you know yeah. not all the, a lot of the ships that we've kind of we've done um and i think that sort of like initial experience like you say of seeing this thing kind of like come and land down and, and the trade is kind of inviting you in and, and entering into, you know, it's, it's very otherworldly, yeah. kind of entering up that, walking yeah. up those steps out of, you know, one of our kind of space stations, like, you know, our human space stations. Oh, absolutely. I think it's going to be kind of really exciting to kind of I mean, the that idea is that as you go up those stairs, you'll have, you know, holographic visuals of products that are in the marketplace. Yeah. And so they will sort of pop up. And just be spinning, so you'll have like, it's again, it's just that sort of shopping experience. And mm. It's like, oh, okay, I can get that and get that, or maybe even artifacts that the traders picked up. Um, I mean, you've got options basically. So, yeah. um, and then also the cargo that yeah, changed. Car didn't cargo it? is a big uh, <laughs> topic. Um, it was one of those things in the the original concept. Even digging out the original design brief was wasn't particularly clear on. Was the cargo bay internal? Was it external? Was it? Uh, yeah, and it, and was we, it a walkable space? And we kept yeah. it external for yeah. the first half of yeah. this development, and mm. and then uh, it's during a meeting where I think a bunch of us were in there with Chris, and we were all like, "Oh no, it's internal!" And then someone else was like, "Oh no, it's external!" And then we just decided like, "Let's make it enclosed." Um, we'll keep the the styling of how it was in the original concept, so you have that sort of I don't know how you want to call it shuttering or on the outside yeah i'm, uh, I'm struggling to actually remember it now because i'm kind of like yeah. not locked into this one but yeah. it was more that it was it was you saw the cargo crates didn't yeah. you they were exposed, yeah, yeah. yeah they were they were exposed certainly from underneath you could see them all yeah they were tops top mounted and they could all drop down but that caused huge problems with the entrance case where if they could all drop down at the same time then you couldn't get in the ship to start with. So we did have a solution, but yeah. this is definitely better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now it's now it's enclosed. You just have one way of dropping at the front, and then we'll see later how it's all managed inside. So you just have you can have the 
front ramp open and cargo coming up and down. Mm-hmm. The two the two systems are not interfering with each other. Mm-hmm. And yeah, your cargo is more protected as well. Yeah, and that's kind of, I guess, a key element of it, isn't it? Is is you know not only having the um, like footfall into your your marketplace, but these big trade items you're going to need to deliver them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're going to move on to, um, so we've been looking at sort of uh, sort of functional images of, you know, basically explaining um, how we've been dealing with design decisions and how that's affected art. And so now we move on to the sort of the sexy stuff of looking at how we've taken the sort of the existing Banu materials, you know, from the early merchantmen, which uh, there was a lot of good stuff on that, and then just progressing it a little bit further. And, you know, again, this is still, probably, you know, this is subject to change still. You know, it's, it's previs, but in terms of where it's heading, you know, it's really quite exciting. And so, um, you know, not everything is modelled in this. So, you know, there, there probably will be more folds in the metal, mm-hmm. kind of like there is on the Defender. Where, yeah. I mean, yeah, if you look at the concept images versus where it all ends up pivoting on those those arms yeah and there's a lot more detail there's a lot more yeah there's a lot more sort of intricate sort of folding of the metal and so we're just kind of like working in with kind of sort of turning it into more it is more ornate it's more of a sort of uh, a, a sort of special item essentially um and sort of really trying to sort of get that impression so you know we're layering in the gold we're layering in the sort of all the sort of um, sort of Art Nouveau line work, sort of with a sort of Banu influence. You know, we're looking at sort of taking um, sort of uh, materials like opal or whatever the Star Citizen equivalent is of that, and also integrating that into the ship. So it really is sort of a display of wealth. It's yeah. like if you've got this, like you're loaded <laughs> it's the crown jewel of your fleet <laughs> it is so uh, you know i think it you know it, it's it's going to some really nice places and so you know we're looking at this heavy bruiser of a turret um and this is still work in progress you know ideally there would be more work to do with this and so we'd get more of the sort of um the curvature in the in the metalwork and stuff but because we're on a you know because of time scale and stuff we've got to make some compromises but um, we'll pass that information on. To yeah, you yeah, we'll, I'm sure we'll get a, have a good kick off on this one. I like this art on this one. Yeah. It's good. So that's the exterior. Um, we'll move on to the interior. Uh, yes, we'll go over how it was, uh, mm-hmm. how it is, and then we'll go on a magical mystery tour through the interior. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So um, it was uh, a lot simpler, wasn't it? Yeah. Back in the day, it was pre pre metric. So we didn't have all the requirements in place. No, no components. No components. The marketplace is a lot simpler in here. And so with with Banu Merchantman 2.0, or in my head it's 3.0, um, you know, we basically moved on to a, a fully upgraded interior old run. And so you can see from this cutaway, and it's kind of hard to show uh, all the pathways in this ship. We, we, and I'm, I feel like I'm banging this drum, but again, we did a lot of work on pathways and navigation. And so you can, you know, as a trader, you're locked off to a certain route. As a crew, you, you've got access to everywhere. But as a trader, you're like, okay, well, you've got these areas you can get to. You can come in from the docking collar, and there's two different docking collars. You know, there's the, there's the larger ship one on one ship side and the ship to station. Yeah. And then that funnels you into the marketplace. And then you can go back down through the flipper or vice versa, the fuel scoop. And so, you know, in terms of what's changed, you know, we've, you know, just we've had to create space for the cargo. Of, you know, the hangar for the Defender, that was a massive one. So a lot of just shifting, just shifting the internals around. Um, you know, there's two elevators in this. There's one for crew, there's one for traders. Again, just I, think, I think that kind of like builds on the experience of, of someone coming to buy stuff there though and to, to me that's kind of like part of the, the lure of the ship is that you know like you say the, the crew have their own everything yeah, up but the, yeah. the, the kind of like the people that are coming to spend money that experience is like the, the kind of like one of the core elements of that ship 
That's what makes it kind so, of yeah, special. A different experience to yeah coming on board it that way versus living on board it and yeah totally working on board. And so we'll see here that these are like previous images. These are straight straight out of three D Studio Max with a bit of Photoshop magic, but it's just giving you an idea of that going up the fuel scoop or the or the market entrance. You know you'll have the you'll have the awnings all folded out. It should be a real grand grand experience. Will we have red carpet? I, I kind of I, I don't know why in my, in my head it's like Aladdin's cave. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, that's totally. what it kind of. And we've got we had some reference images as well. Oh, okay. For the marketplace, and so you, here you basically you've walked up, and you're you're again. This is always in this concept uh, theory has always been this tree of life essentially. So basically you enter at the base of the tree. And then it forms the spine, and then that tree branches out and basically reaches to the front of the ship. Mm. That's the theory. Like, yeah. It's always it's, been this organic theory. The same in the Defender. You, you come in the Defender up the ramp. Yes. And then you have that big central tree, yeah. which houses components, and then that stretches out and back around to form. So the, the line doors. work in this is is a little more sort of refined. Into it's, It has gone less organic um, compared to the Defender. We've kind of gone for a slightly less... Alien feeling, yeah. Just to like, like, doesn't feel like it's actually a tree that has grown. Yeah. And they build a ship around yeah. this kind of organic thing. It is a ship. Yeah, absolutely. And so here um, is a capture from 3D Studio Max. Just so it's super clear, like this is where this is the lower lower floor. So the marketplace is split into two floors, eight shops on each floor. Yeah. Or is it? No, sorry, eight, uh, four eight, shops. Four on shops each floor. for each floor, eight total. Um, and then you have this little walkway that sort of goes over the top. You can kind of see here, obviously, we've got a flying jellyfish. <laughs> but the theory is that there'll be a holographic display and, you know, hopefully the captain can choose what's on there. Yeah, it's been a special offer for the day. Could be special offer, could show a weapon, could just, could just have, like, butterflies flying around, whatever. But this really gives you a vibe of... Um, you know, the complexity of the, the Banu sort of folded metal, that organicness, and sort of just that overall experience. The headaches that you're going to cause me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah, Aladdin's cave. Yeah, yeah. You know, you've got the little jewels hanging yeah. off the... I really, I really like those, though, the, the kind of like the treatment of light in a lot of the concepts. I don't know if I'm stealing your thunder from no, future that's fine, thing. Yeah, yeah. but the, the sort of... Um, you know, these, these jewels and stones that are kind of going to be used as light source throughout the ship, and I think that's kind of like very really nice. Yeah. Just, just like a bit different, different and, and it, yeah, fluorescent tube, yeah, LED thing. lights or yeah. Something. And so we've really sort of pushed on that on this one, and so here is like, in there's basically as part of the tree of life in the in the marketplace is the elevator shaft, and so mm. you can then go up there into the negotiation mm, yes. room, which was in the original one of the the. Images that everyone remembers from yes. the, the original concept was that room with the table and looking yeah. out over the cargo. And so we've kind of kept that, and we'll come to that in a second. But before you get there, you come out of the elevator and you're sort of in a in a central corridor, which also leads to guests' habitation rooms. Yeah. In law, these trades often take a long amount of time. So there's, there's a lot of back and forth with the, the narrative team on this ship in particular with... How, how do Banu trade? How, how do they eat? How do they... Because for the Defender, it was sort of very small scale. Mm -hmm. it's, it's long duration. Um, so it's the, these trades can take days, weeks, well, maybe months. So the, the people that are coming on board to trade need a place to stay. Yeah. Whilst and, the and it's not talking. like you know, the people that are going to be kind of flying this, they, they don't have a... Well, in my head, they don't have like a base of operations. Like this is their, their home. This is their home. Yeah. So... You know, like you say, if, if you're trading your, I guess some of these things could be their livelihood. They're, they're you know, they're trying to trading these really expensive high-end items, and that's kind of. And you want them to feel special, like yeah. you know, the the thing about this always has been that you know, making making the people feel you know that they're in something quite unique, and so you can see here, you know, in this image we've got massive gemstones. They could be whatever, but, you know, in terms of lighting opportunities, you'll have mm. the, the core sticks and the light, you know, if they're rotating. There's a lot of cool opportunities. And so here is the, the conference room, which we just mentioned. In the original concept, it was smaller, a lot more compact, but obviously the ship has got bigger and therefore we've got more space. But also, it's it's a display of wealth, right? If you can afford to 
waste a bit of space essentially you know if you could be like you know oh, i don't need to pack it with everything you know i just got to make this nice uh, player experience where everyone feels sort of relaxed and so that's kind of what we've been pushing with so there's a lot of there's a lot of commonality that we've taken from the original and fed into this but then also pushing pushing further so again you can see the, the sort of like carved gemstones or inlaid inlaid with more gemstones inlaid with gold and so Again, you know, in terms of player experience, it's going to be totally different to anything yeah. that's happened. And we've still kept that viewpoint looking into the into the hangar. So yeah, the cargo bay. Sorry, into the cargo bay. And so yeah, it's it's been quite a tussle trying to trying to get everything into place. And then this is an example of um, one of the one of the hubs for like if you if you want to do, if you're doing long term trading. And this is uh, really sort of based on, again, keeping with the organic theme, the, the Banu shapes, but pushing in a slightly different palette and materials. And so it's kind of based off of the interior of a Nautilus shell. Um, and so you can't really tell from here, but actually it circles back on itself. So there's a, a little internal wall there that you go behind, and that's where um, toilet and yeah. shower and all that sort of stuff is. And then you've got the bed in the back, and then you've got lockers and little seating area so you kind of like a real sort of organic journey so again just pushing on um leveraging that gian tech as well so the chairs and the desk and even the lights are, are just sort of held yeah, held in space yeah. so um quite different quite different and so that's that's where the traders go but yeah. the crew obviously has got access to the full ship and so slightly less grandiose but not yeah so the docking cargo um that, that, that docking corridor is is still quite elaborate but that's going to be shared between yeah, yeah it's more of a shared space there's some more technical elements in there in terms of venting and stuff and we still want to you know this has always been a theory of you've got your superstructure then you've got your tech and then you've got your layering of um the bodywork, the, yeah, the cladding, yeah. yeah, and then you know there'll be there'll be areas where the sort of tech is revealed and stuff, and so um, by balancing those two, the proportions, you sort of you can kind of like alter the, the feel of the space, and so I mean it's going to be a going to be a journey for you guys yeah. of like how you know how we achieve all this, but this is the corridor leading to the uh, marketplace from the docking area and so you've got that great big green ring which kind of sort of you know it, that we kind of put there that there and kind of thinking of it shows green when it's safe yeah you know the docking you know yeah. there's not some kind of a yeah, vintage you, going on yeah we're, i was having this conversation with the team this week actually about that exact thing about kind of uh, communicating to the player but not in just a you know as simple as something flashing on a screen or, or whatever else but right. just having something a little bit a little bit more again. So I think again, this will give you some really good opportunities. And again, it's just uh, the new materials, the folds, um, and you know, moving on to the habitation section where the sort of crew can go. You know, people people who are familiar with the defender will really sort of see the sort of common common thread here. So you know, the amount of gold and shiny stuff, <laughs> to put it bluntly, is reduced. And so it goes to a more matte materials. You know, it's a little less display of wealth. It's a little more functional, but still got that 3D printing. You get a lot of, of that sort of like layering in here as well, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. That in the middle is the, the what do we call it? The magic tagine. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. so it's fed from underneath, and you you, know, you choose what you want, and then it appears, and the top comes off, and you get your food out. Yeah. And you get your cutlery. Um, you can speak to the narrative for a while about sort of how our aliens eat. It's, it's, <laughs> that could be a whole talk in itself, I feel. It's, it's a tricky one because it's, it's an alien, it's a Banu ship, but it's got to support humans mm, yes, operating yeah. it. Um, if you had an entirely Banu crew, if you were playing as a Banu, then some aspects of this you don't need, but as, yes. as humans yeah, you the, do. The, so the Banu would ca ca they cater for both, yeah. don't they? Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah... Uh, a lot of a lot of complex stuff to sort of 
get our heads around. Engineering, this is a work in progress shot. It's one of my favourite bits, though. Yeah, I really like this. And you can't really tell from this shot, but it's essentially set over three levels. But you've got that main middle level, and you can sort of get on mini lifts to drop down to components or walk up the stairs to some elevated stuff. But essentially, this is leading to the main central engine, and that is like sort of counter rotating all those elements. And so you get this awesome. Um, shadow play basically going on in the room like really sort of cinematic it looks extremely cool in in motion just and if we can tie it to either that was it were you talking about whether tying it to damage or the state of the it sounds like engine. a good idea so i'm gonna say yes so you yeah. know if the engine's <laughs> malfunctioning and it's sort of slowing yeah. down stuff that'd be kind of cool i'll, I'll take i'll claim that one okay yeah, yeah i'm not sure what's what it's <laughs> And then, you know, in, in terms of the cargo space, what we're looking at here is like the 32 SCU sort of cargo these, boxes. These are the, the big cargo containers that you see in all the, the rest stops and the cargo decks. These yeah. are those, like, the modern-day big shipping cargo containers. shipping containers. Yeah. That, that they're quite hefty, and you can't, you certainly can't pick them up by yourself, and you can't really do it with handheld tractor beams. You need something big. Yes. And so we've got, we've got a hefty... Um, a moving mechanism in there at the moment, which you can control from this position that you can see in the, in the screenshot. Um, and so that'll be something else to work out then. Um, but something like else to work out, John. <laughs> but you know, will be a really cool area. And sort of just below you, that's basically where the sort of the loading platform is. Yeah, because it moves the the cargo containers into that space, yes, and then that and space then drops kind down, of drops down, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So there will be that sort of like. Oh, I need the bottom one on the third yes. stack. Yeah. All right, okay, yeah. let's let's shift everything out and there yeah. is that sort of mini game of Jenga almost with mm. how stuff is going. How you're going to access stuff, yeah. and all the time you'll be able to see from the negotiation room the, into the poor the... guy moving it around, just <laughs> yeah. so you don't mess it up. Um, but yeah, as, as a result of all those changes, the the cargo capacity has gone down a little. I think it was. It was a nebulous number to start with mm. that had never really been proved still out. It's big. still big. So yeah. it's, it's around two thousand eight hundred. Uh, which is not a small amount of cargo by any means. Yeah. Um, so it's still well above most ships, but until you get to the whole series, yeah. I was going to say, what, yeah. I can't remember what a whole series. The, the hull is over 3,000, so it's... Well, just it's, still, yeah. It's a lot, um, but it's maybe not quite as much as people were hoping for originally. Although I think... It looks pretty, though. It does. A yeah. lot of cargo, but you're gaining so much more. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's always... a. Uh, Give and take with these things of we we could make every ship do everything, but then mm -hmm. they just become yeah. these humongous vessels. Um, yeah. So it's a it's always a trade. So moving now up to the bridge area, and what we're looking at here is very much work in progress. I mean, we are literally working on this right now. In the sort of top left, I had to think then is. Um, an image that we created sort of on round two and we're and we're sort of leveraging leveraging that heavily so a lot of a lot of those shapes will appear into this new stuff but in this new sort of configuration you're able to access the bridge but you're also able to access the remote not the, the man turret it's more of an experience and then also you've got side corridors which leads you to it's got a special name. That... It's like a med. It's not a meditation room. I can't remember the name oh. of it. There was a, a approved name, wasn't there? Yeah, I can't think what it is. Um, it's kind of like a sort of sacred space, um, where sort of the Banu can sort of pay. You know, we've kind of got the sort of equivalent of prayer wheels. That's kind of the theory. So it's like this little, this little nice little calm space. Um, so that's been quite fun. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of the areas on this on this ship are very sort of multi-threaded mm. you know you often have your central area and then stuff coming off it um so like i said there's been a lot of a lot of thought given to navigation and in this area also are two two lifts which also can take you quickly to other areas mm. from this bridge it's a an eight person crew now um so the space for four on the bridge obviously there's there's four uh, stations there uh, you have one person that can go to the, the manned turrets towards the rear, one person that can fly the defender, and that leaves two to, to deal with everything else whilst you're flying around, because you, you can still trade whilst flying around, but it's probably not the the wisest of ideas if 
the person who's come on board to trade has left their ship behind. So, it's, I, I mean, it might I, be good for negotiations. Yeah, it's good for negotiations. Yeah. <laughs> but the, that eight crew can then fill the eight shops if you're just landed on a planet somewhere. You, mm-hmm. you sort of you pull double G. You don't need, obviously don't need to be flying if you landed. You can menu shop or you can let one person do do double duty in shops. Yeah. Yeah. This is a um, an example, well, a full size image of uh, that round two concept of of the bridge, and again, you can see the sort of the superstructure that's and all the layering basically. So you know, you know, we have changed the configuration since this image, um, but a lot of a lot of that theory is going to get transposed onto this new one. Same with the materials, and again, just continuing with that flow of. From, from back to front, basically, always sort of this tree of life and going to the nose of the yeah. ship. By the time people see this, we'll have actually, we will have actually had someone start, yeah, yeah, that's true. start working on it. Yeah. So it's actually in production now after, after all these years. Yeah, yeah it's going to um, be good. So. This, this is actually one of the ships that I'm really excited about kind yeah. of playing with in game. Um, it, it's just such a kind of, I say, it's got that kind of. Uh, full trading experience but it feels like a proper home that you can can live on and it's got a load of weaponry as well which yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. if in doubt then just yeah get the guns out yeah <laughs> you will buy it <laughs> yes yeah. so that was the merchantman pretty cool uh looking forward to seeing that go into production yeah, uh, go through production because it's by the time people see it it will be in production yep 